Another thing that scares me is the weakness that most people have in their lateral hip. I'm going to show you a way to kind of isolate this muscle both in a kind of motor skill practice way and in the functional way that it actually works in an upright human being. So most of you have probably done that where you sit on a, a machine and push your legs apart. It's kind of like the worst, least effective, least functional exercise you can possibly do because it puts you in a seated hip flexed position. And it's easy to cheat. If you've done like a thousand leg lifts and you haven't noticed any sort of streamline happening to your lateral thigh, I'm going to show you why. Ideally, if you're going to use the muscles, the muscles of the hip, um, you have to make sure that you stabilize the bony parts. So if you stand on one leg and then you're going to fix your pelvis, meaning your pelvis doesn't get to move anymore, you're going to lift your leg out to the side, which means the only thing that's changing is the femur relative to the pelvis. But what most people do is people tend to move at the waist. Can you see how my whole entire pelvis is moving? So you can do a thousand leg lifts this way, but if the motion is coming at the waist, you didn't even move the hip joint, which means you didn't even use the lateral hip muscles. So when you stand on one leg, or better yet, if you lay down, I'm gonna lay down on this rocky surface. If you lay down on your side, push this hip as far away from you as you can and continue to push your pelvis with your hand away from you as you lift to get the contraction to happen here. If you lift, you see how I'm doing this? There's nothing happening in the hip joint at all. And although it looks like abduction, it's not. It's just raising or using the waist. Now how you use this in standing, what we just showed you was this end of the muscle moving towards this end, which is kind of how we think of all muscles moving. What you're going to do here instead is you're going to move the upper attachment towards the lower okay. attachment. Hi, Pop. Good morning. There's Pop. Every day he rides his bike. So anyway, you're going to go ahead and you're going to contract in this direction. So this is a pelvic list, same muscle, different direction. The way we just used it in, in this way is not really a functional way because it doesn't help us with what we use this muscle for, there's not a lot of this happening in nature, um, is standing. Standing and allowing the other leg to swing through. But it's nice to practice in both directions. So you can do the leg lift like I just showed you. Um, you can just stand and isolate the motion. It's not coming from here. You're not lifting this hip up. You're pulling this hip down to clear this foot away. You also want to make sure that your knee is not bent. While you do it, you have to have a straight leg in order to have full length of that muscle. Or um, you can also try this exercise. This is a resistance tube. I can't find, I have a ring, I can't find it. So I just tend to knot. You can also, um, for most physical therapy clinics, you can get a plastic sheet band that you can tie a knot in. We call this the monster walk. Very scary. And you put it down around your ankles. Make sure your feet are pointing straight ahead. Put a little tension, and if you don't have a monster walk, a band, you can still do it without. You can keep your feet wide. You're not stepping in, right? Because every time you take a step in, it takes the slack off. You stay wide, and you don't do it from the waist. You see that? If you're doing it from the waist, you're not getting any hip motion. You have to do it from the hip. When you do it from the hip, you get lots of lateral hip strength, which is great for pregnancy, it's great for uh, sacroiliac joint stabilization, it's good for glute development, hip health, bone, low bone density in the hip, it's great for everything. Um, and I'll show you one way to make it extra, extra scary. That's actually the way to do it the most, the most correct. This is actually how you do it most correctly. You want to make sure that You've got all your scales in alignment down the back. Arms are out in a very scary position. And I call this the monster walk because it kind of has a lumbering kind of quality to it, if you will. But if you're uh, trying to figure out how to freak people out this uh, Halloween, this is a good way. It's monster walk all about the place, right? 